Hello. Do you want to play a game? Why, yes. Yes, I do. The question is, do you want to play Back for Blood? Here are my impressions on the open beta. Hey friends, it's me Axial GT. Today we're taking a break from New World and playing Back for Blood. The open beta started earlier this week, and now it's impressions time. That's right, I said impressions for Back for Blood. I've seen a myriad of review videos all over YouTube. Now actually how somebody reviews an alpha or a beta for a game is beyond me. Mr. Matty Plays did one, and so did Dreamcast Guy, plus a host of others. And that's strange, at least for me. Reviewing an alpha or beta for a game is kind of like Motor Trend reviewing a car before it actually comes off the production line. But again, anyway, that's just me. But before we dive in, this is the point in the video where I ask you to subscribe, hit the like button, and ring the bell to be notified of future Axial GT content. I do a mix of PC hardware slash gaming news and reviews. So if you like no spin and no bullshit type of content, this may be the place for you. Plus, it's much appreciated. I'm gonna tell it like it is, YouTuber, with a weird sense of humor. Your life may depend on it. With that out of the way, <laughs> Let's get started. Okay, first we'll talk about some system specs for the open beta. Now this is due to change when the game launches. So this is what they recommend just for the open beta, but it should be close at launch. And I'm thinking at the launch, this is gonna be the recommended, not the minimum. For CPU on the Intel side, we have an i5-8400. And that's a six core, six thread part. That has a base frequency of 2.8 gigahertz and a max turbo frequency of four gigahertz. On the flip side for AMD, we have a Ryzen 7 1800X, eight cores and 16 threads with a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and also a boost up to four. As for your GPU, they recommended a GTX 970 for the green team and the red team is an RX 590. They suggest 12 gigabytes of RAM, 25 gigabytes of storage, Windows 10 and DirectX 11. Now the footage you're seeing here was recorded on a 3700X with the 1080 Ti. And as you can see, it gets well over 100 FPS. But I also ran the game on a Ryzen 2600 with an RX 570. And instead of using the Epic settings, like I did with the 1080 Ti, with the RX 570, I did have to lower everything down to high to be able to get the same FPS. Just in case you didn't know, Back for Blood is the, or has been stated to be, the spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead. Kind of the Left 4 Dead 3 that we never got. Thanks Valve, appreciate it. But anyway, I've always loved Left 4 Dead games. They were really innovative when they first came out, and Back for Blood was developed by Turtle Rock, the same people behind Left 4 Dead. And one thing I can say about the game is Turtle Rock really knows their gunplay. All the guns and weapons in the game feel really crisp, and actually have a little weight to them. Here's something else we might want to keep in mind. The original Left 4 Dead came out in 2008, and the sequel Left 4 Dead 2 came out in 2009, and that was a long time ago. What is that, 12 years? And the thing about Left 4 Dead games is that excellent co-op, and you can even play with bots if you wanted to play with yourself. The game. Play the game by yourself. Anyway, but Left 4 Dead also had excellent player versus player. And that's actually what's kept Left 4 Dead 2 going all these years later. There's thousands of people that play the game. And that's where Back 4 Blood kind of falls short. Even in their trailer for multiplayer, it looked a lot more fleshed out. But it's not that way in the beta. And that really makes the game lose a lot of flair. But what Todorok did to try to make this game feel different, besides the updated graphics, is by adding a card system. As you play through the game, you get cards to add to your deck. Like finding more ammo or defensive cards. And some might say these cards are actually kind of useful and they are as you start the game. But as you progress through the game, the cards do come in handy. Another thing that's a little bit different is you can purchase weapons and modifications for those weapons with copper that you find throughout the level. So you're not stuck with the same boring weapons throughout the game. But I really don't think this is enough to keep things fresh. But I do applaud Turtle Rock for very few bugs in the game. Actually, my multiple playthroughs, besides a few minor graphical glitches, I have not experienced one bug or a crash. The game does seem to be really polished. And given that it's 2021 and we can't get a game that doesn't have bugs, crashes, or isn't finished, that's actually saying something. This is a beta. Now, Turtle Rock has said that they're actually looking for feedback from the beta so they know which direction to go before the game launches on October 12th, 2021. Whether that's enough time to actually do anything with the game, that's hard to say. But is the game actually worth it? It has a $60 price tag, and I would say that's really difficult pill to swallow. This game does need a lot of improvement. For one, the PvP needs to be balanced and fixed. It made more like the trailer that was released. Another thing that needs to be done is bots. The bots are stupid. They can tag items and they can heal you in a jam, but actually relying upon them, that is a no-go. 
that isn't happening. But Turtle Rock did say that they're working on it and they know that the AI in the beta is dumb. But all that remains to be seen. As for potential, this game has a lot of it. And I'm sure others think so as well. The game has already gone gold through pre-orders. And they also said there's going to be free content later on down the road after launch. So that is something to look forward to. But I'm giving my impressions on the game in its current state. These are my impressions. Now there are a few people who should get this game. And that is if you have Xbox Game Pass or Game Pass for PC. That's a given because really what do you have to lose? There is quite a bit of enjoyment from what basically amounts to a free game. But those who do not have Game Pass without the player versus player or versus mode, there really just isn't enough here to justify a $60 purchase. So people on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, and Series X, and PC who don't have Game Pass, it would be a no-go for me. At least until the game went on sale. Now that's the game in its current state. So no, I wouldn't be pre-ordering the game. I would wait till third-party reviews come out when it launches on October 12th which I do have a feeling that it will be delayed. Could be wrong, but just an opinion. Between the open beta and launch is not enough time, I believe, to actually fix all that's wrong with the game. But we'll see if I'm right. Back 4 Blood is a decent game, don't get me wrong, but there's just not enough there to justify a $60 price tag. Let's hope that Total Rock can pull a rabbit out of their ass and give Left 4 Dead a spiritual successor that's a worthy addition to the genre. And I'll also be reviewing this game when it does come out. Games like Back 4 Blood, Battlefield 2042, A New World, are the reasons why I build PCs. Love those types of games. Oh, and Skyrim. Yeah, I'm an Elder Scrolls whore. Sorry. And since I don't pad my videos and get straight to the point, my videos usually wind up being shorter. So it really does help out if you like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that shit. It really helps out with YouTube's algorithm. And if you don't subscribe, Jigsaw might just want to play a game with you. I want to play a game. <laughs> That's it, my friends. You be safe and have a good one.